Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg. This is Bonika. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do a full review of this watch right here, a Comet Chronograph. Brand new company, brand new watch. In fact, they haven't even launched yet. They're launching at the end of August on Kickstarter. And we'll talk all about that in a few minutes or so. Just to let you know, this watch is a prototype and it was provided by Comet for this review. We get to keep this watch. Of course, that's not going to affect the review in any way. Just want to be transparent. Now let's talk about the watch itself. Looking at the case dimensions, the watch has a 41 millimeter diameter. It's 48 and a half millimeters from one lock to another, 22 millimeter lock width, and it's 13.2 millimeters thick. Here's what the watch looks like on my seven and a half inch wrist. As you can see, it fits pretty well, although it does fit larger than the 41 millimeter diameter would suggest. Because of the design of this watch, it's mainly all dial. There's not much bezel, so the watch appears to be larger on the wrist. I'd say this one wears more like a 42, maybe even almost 43 millimeters. So keep that in mind if you don't like watches that wear large or if you have a smaller wrist. The weight of the watch is 76 grams. As I mentioned in the introduction of this video, the watch will be launching on Kickstarter next week or so, end of August pretty much. And the prices are as follows. The super early bird limited to only 100 pieces. So the first 100 people get this watch for 200 US dollars. And after that, the regular Kickstarter price is $230. So we're gonna judge this watch as a $230 watch because maybe you're not gonna be one of the first lucky 100 people to score this watch at 200 bucks. So what do you get for your $230? Well, you get a stainless steel case with a fairly nice finish. We have a brushed finish on the sides and on the top of the lugs. So it's pretty much all brushed except for a few accents like the crown is polished, the pushes are polished, and the step bezel is polished. The crystal on the watch is a domed K1 crystal. So this watch doesn't have a sapphire crystal. Uh, that's my first negative with the watch. The case back is a screw down case back. Not much going on with this one. There isn't any crazy laser etching or anything like that. Just the Comet Chronograph logo and a little bit of writing there. Five Atmospheres Chronograph Miyota 6S11 movement, Comet and the 316L stainless steel. So only five atmospheres or 50 meters of water resistance for this watch. Normally that would be a negative for me, but a lot of these, again, vintage inspired uh, chronograph companies offer only 50 meters of water resistance because of the pushers on the case. So we have the two pushers, one at the two o'clock position, one at the four o'clock position. They are very vintage inspired looking at the shape and the size of these pushers. We also have this crown at the three o'clock position. And notice that the crown is unsigned. Now I'm not sure why they did that, whether it's a cost saving or whether it's to pay homage to these vintage chronograph pieces. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm actually a big fan of vintage chronographs. I have a few in my collection. One of my favorite watches is my 1950s Baum and Mercier. And a lot of these vintage chronographs don't have signed crowns because back in the day they were assembled from a few different companies. They were sourcing parts from a few different sources and the watches were kind of put together uh, by one company, but they would share parts with other watches. So a lot of the parts were not signed, like the crowns were pretty much never signed. So here I'm not sure if they're paying homage to those older days or they're just cutting down the cost or maybe a little bit of both. While we're on the subject of the crown, the crown is not a screw down crown, it's a simple push-pull style crown. One of the negatives that I have about this watch is the fact that it does have a ghost position. What I mean by a ghost position is that the movement, this Miyota 6S11 movement, does have a date complication. However, there's no date cutout on the dial, which is, in my opinion, the right decision not to have a date, not to ruin the symmetry of this dial. However, that does create a a ghost position, meaning when you pull out the crown in the first position, that's to change the date, but there is no date. Uh, a bit of a negative, a bit of a nitpick. Uh, most of you probably would not even notice it and would not even care about that. I already mentioned the movement a couple of times. It's a Miyota 6S11 quartz chronograph movement. It's not a Mecca quartz. The big two differences that I see between this quartz movement and the Mecca quartz movement is number one, the feel of the pushers. So when you push uh, the pushers on this chronograph, I think they did a pretty good job to imitate that mechanical push, but it's not quite the same as a mechanical chronograph or even the Mecca quartz chronographs. So it still does feel a bit like a quartz uh, push of a button. 
And the second difference, it's not a snapback chronograph. So when you reset the chronograph, it kind of glides back to zero instead of snapping back. Here I have it next to Spinnaker Hall chronograph. I did an unboxing video for this chronograph on my Instagram page. I'll link that video in the description below. Uh, there's no review coming for this watch. I just did an unboxing, so check it out. But basically why I bring up this watch is because this one here does have a Mecca Quartz movement. And you can see the difference in terms of the reset for the movement. So when you reset the spinnaker, it kind of snaps back to zero quickly like a mechanical chronograph would versus a comet chronograph or this uh, quartz movement chronograph. What it does, it kind of glides back to zero. So that's the big difference between the two movements. The way the chronograph seconds hand moves, it moves the same way. So it kind of mimics that mechanical chronograph move. I think it takes it about five ticks per second. So it gives it a bit of a smoother chronograph experience. The star of the show and their main selling feature for this chronograph is this dial and the set of hands. And I gotta tell you, that all does look really good. It's a good homage to vintage chronographs from 1940s and 1950s. I really like this design. I should mention that this watch is available in seven different uh, color combinations. I went for the simple one, simple man. I go for a simple design. Even the simple design is still uh, very cluttered. Uh, it's not overly cluttered in my opinion, but I know a lot of you guys will find it a little bit too cluttered because there's a lot going on. There's a tachymeter, there's a telemeter, there's the sub seconds hand by the six o'clock position. That's for the seconds hand of main watch keeping. There's also the chronograph timer for 60 minutes. That's by the 12 o'clock position. So there's quite a bit going on. Not a lot of writing, just comet, chronograph and anti-magnetic. Uh, so that's all in the center of the dial and a whole bunch of different numbers as I mentioned all these different scales Something I should mention is that uh, Comet chronographs have actually switched their dial suppliers So between the time they provided me this prototype and between now they went with a new dial supplier and according to them this dial supplier provides a much better quality of dials. The cost of dials increased threefold, but they say it's worth it. And I can see that because again, their main selling feature are these dials. So the dial on the final production version will look even better than these dials that you see on the prototype. The watch comes on this Horveen leather strap, great quality, very soft, comfortable to wear. This one is black. Uh, there are some versions of this chronograph available with a brown leather strap. Actually, I think for this design, I would prefer maybe a tan or distressed looking leather strap. Uh, this black one works fairly well, but maybe I'd switch it up a little bit. That's just my personal opinion. However, this is a good quality leather strap with quick release pins. One thing to note is that the buckle is actually not signed. So it's a blank buckle. Maybe that will change for the final production version. But as of right now, this prototype has an unsigned buckle. So what are my final thoughts on this chronograph? Well, I like it, but I don't love it. There are three things that keep me away from loving it. Number one, in my opinion, the case is too big. 41 millimeters on this kind of case design is too large for my preferences. The second thing that keeps me from loving this watch is lack of a domed sapphire crystal. And as I mentioned before, I know their competitors are also using this KY mineral crystal with sapphire coating, but this would be a perfect opportunity to make yourself stand out from the competition by employing a sapphire crystal. And the third reason that keeps me away from loving this watch and just simply liking it is the fact that it only has a quartz chronograph movement and not a mecha quartz. There is even an explanation of why they chose to use a quartz movement versus mecha quartz on their Kickstarter page. And the main reason is because they came up with this dial layout, this dial design, and no mecha quartz movement would fit this exact dial configuration. So they had to go with the quartz movement. And to most people, let's be fair, that's not gonna even matter. Most people don't know the difference between mecha quartz and quartz. But to me, if I can't have a mechanical chronograph, I would prefer to have at least a mecha quartz chronograph because it gives you at least some of the feeling of having those mechanical components in the movement. With all that being said, I think the quality of the watch is pretty good. I think they will do well with this one. The main selling feature are these uh, funky dial designs and they have some really crazy ones out there. Something that will really make them stand out from all the other watch companies. And as I mentioned with every Kickstarter watch that I review on the channel, there is one more negative 
and that's the fact that you have to back the campaign now so you have to pay the money in september and you have to wait all the way until april 2020 to wait for the delivery of your watch that's just the name of the game with kickstarter campaigns but that's a bit of a negative to me i appreciate you watching this video until the end please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave a comment in the comment section below let me know what you think about this comet chronograph are you picking one up are you letting this one go would you prefer this over Dan Henry or Undone? Leave all those thoughts in the comment section below. I always enjoy reading your comments. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing a simple $63 L'Oreal watch. It's of course a Rolex Submariner homage. I did an unboxing video for this watch and now I'm kind of going through the testing phase. I'll have a comparison between this and Invicta coming soon. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that video. Also in the description of this video, there is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. This thing is bigger than you.